Now let's, uh, let's open up in a prayer. Father, we, as we continue to worship you today, I know that there's so many that come in here with so many different things on their hearts. Lord, may they understand today that you, to not to forget that has been led us today that always a way. And Lord, you guide us in that way through your spirit. Help us today, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, we're in a time of, uh, if you will, of elections. And, uh, you know, I just want to share this with you. I don't think I've ever shared this before. But anyways, uh, it's just an argument of time, isn't it? The news that, you know, talking to people, somebody wears the wrong hat, you know, all those different things. And, uh, you know, i never forget... About 20 years ago, uh, it, our house was in North Canton. It was kind of on, on a hill in a neighborhood. And uh, the, the election, it was a big, the election was coming in the next week. So there were signs everywhere. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep this real generic here on, on who's who here. But anyway, so I was going to vote a certain way and so forth. Then all our neighbors kind of knew how I vote, how they vote. So, so <laughs> The week before the election, uh, how can I say this? Uh, I woke up on a Sunday morning uh, getting ready to go to church. I know the neighbors are probably looking out laughing. There were about 20 signs in our yard for the other team. <laughs> and, and I just thought, I just thought, man, people, don't they get so worked up? Uh, you know, and, I, and we understand. So, but what I, I want you to know in me, we're like, what does this have to do with the message today about not surviving in these last days of part two from last week? And how that it goes into, I, I, I don't want you to live like that. You know, I, I want you not to live just surviving. And I feel like, it, it, for example, if you see people walking in a, gro you ever watch people walking in and out of the grocery store? They're just, you know, their arms are they're just, you know, it's like the weight of the world. And that's why how so many people are living today. There's one thing that I could, when I leave this earth, that I want you to know next to seeing people saved and, and, and baptized would be for you to always know that you are a spiritual being. There's something supernatural the day that you accepted Christ as your Savior. The Holy Spirit came to dwell in your heart. And the Holy Spirit right now, why, why did you show up today? I believe the reason that you showed up today is because that Spirit drew you. You are a spiritual being. And as a believer... God wants to guide you in his spirit. And as he guides us in that spirit, I don't want you to just to survive. I, I want you to know that God wants you to live life, no matter what's going on in your life, with victory. How do we do that? Well, look at God's word in John 16, 13. Jesus was getting ready to leave this world. He was on his way to the cross and then the resurrection. And he's speaking to those that he loves the most and he is encouraging them that something will happen after he leaves. He says these words in John 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all Truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. No one will argue there were more earthquakes this week. Uh, there was another one, I believe, in California. There was a large one in Japan. And we know what the Bible says before the Lord comes back. We will see all these different signs. That's just one of them. Uh, we will see an increase in morality that we can't even begin to imagine where we are. And we've talked about that before. But what God wants us to know today and why he drew you, that spirit that's in you, 
that, that's what brought you here today. The Holy Spirit brought you here today and has been led us. We, the Bible says in the book, the same book of John, we worship in spirit and in truth. I so believe this, why when you sing and, and you worship, that that is so important and it's preparing your spirit for what the message wants to say to your heart. And the more that we sing and the more that we worship, we're ready to say, this is exactly what, whatever it might be, it's exactly what I need, because I know everything, what we just read there, Jesus said, I'm going to leave you my spirit. Here's the key that will never lie to you. His spirit is never going to lie to you. As we have that spirit, what does that mean for us to know that that spirit is going to guide us, as it says, that he will guide you unto all truth? Do you know the Lord has a way for, for you to go today? He, he's got your week that he would like for you. He's got it planned out for you. And depending on whether, you know, you see kids that, you know, they know that they're, they're getting ready to go in the doctor's office and they don't want to go in. And have you ever seen that before in the car? And their parents are just dragging them in and they're kicking and screaming and hollering, you know. And it's something that they need and they know that they should have, but they do not want to do that. Is it, isn't that us sometimes? You know, who do you listen to? It says, we, 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 the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you. That means there has to be a, a, whatever he hears, he will speak, and he's going to tell us. So, so my question is, who do you listen? Well, we listen, you know, we used to our kids, we listen to our parents. You, you, you listen to someone that's very close to you, to how they, they counsel you. Why? Because if you are stubborn enough to just always listen to yourself, <clears throat> you will make the wrong mistake. What God wants you to know today, that he has a certain way, and he doesn't want you to kick and scream along the way. He wants you to know the spirit that's within you, he's going to guide you. Now, here's the key, just like getting back to politics at the beginning. The Holy Spirit will never argue with you and will we'll never drag you to go to a certain place. I, I really want you to understand it today because when we see what's going on in this, <clears throat> this time, <clears throat> excuse me, in our society, in, in politics, that it's so much just, we don't like what we see and all the arguments and this and that. And so I, I want you to know the Holy Spirit there is a flow should be in your life. And, and if there isn't, you say, well, maybe this is where you're thinking right now. Well, Dallas, it's just kind of confusing. The Holy Spirit is like, well, I don't even know sometimes when I'm supposed to do this or not do this. It's a great question. He's going to guide us in all truth. If you don't know today, what you're supposed to do, or if you're supposed to take that job, or if you're supposed to be involved in that relationship or marry that person or do this, and you fill in the blank of all the different things that you might face this week. God tells us something very important. Then you just wait. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So many people today, believers, they are just exhausted because either they're being drawn down by what they're going through or the, what the whole family is going through. And it's just sucking the life out of you. And God's saying, I don't want you to live that way. I'm going to guide you in truth in such a way that you're going to recognize. And if you can't, if you don't have a peace about where you're headed, that means you're, you're making no, your own decision. And he's just saying, wait. Because if you're going to try and do it on your own and you've got it figured out, 
the devil has lied to you and it's going to look better than what it is and you're going to get in trouble. Let me go further with that. I want you to go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 25. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him, who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice is talking in many ways in the Old Testament, whose voice then shook the earth but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake, again, is the, the title of the, of the title today, what's going to happen towards the end. Yet once more I shake not only earth, but also heaven, it says in the book of Revelation. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of things that are being shaken as of things that are made. Things which cannot be shaken remain. Let me stop there. There's some things in all of our lives that God needs, he needs to get out. And the only way he can get out is he has to work on us. We don't like that. But if we're willing to really listen to him, just the same if you had godly parents and, and they so wanted you to do or not do something, and no matter how you tried, they said no. There was a reason for that. The reason was for that, they could see down that road that you're going on. They have been there. You know, there's not one place that you're going to go in your life that God hasn't already seen. And he's trying to protect you. And if there's some things that he's shaking off of your life that it says there, it's for your good. There is a shaking that goes on. I don't like it sometimes in my life. We all don't like that. But then we look back and we see, man, the, I'm so thankful. And this is what we all say. I wouldn't have changed anything. You're here today for a reason. And, and if it's more than anything else, it is just to know that you are a spiritual being. God wants you to have victory. And the way that you have victory, let him guide you. Let him take your hand. And even if you're kicking and screaming all the way along, let him take you down that road. Because he's got something amazing for you. And if you're not sure of what decision to, to make, then just wait. Because th this shaking that's going on in our world that we see, it's like, as a believer, we should, we're, we're watching all this happen all around us, okay? Everything that we see taking place everywhere. And as a believer, we... We should have peace. See, as the title said, it, and, and as we're heading to, towards the end times, we're here. Someone says that we're seconds away before the Lord coming back. I don't, I don't know. But I know it's soon. And I know that the Lord wants to bless you in your life. The only way that he can is you have to follow him because everything he tells you is truth. And anything that the devil tries to tell you and the way to go, and the way to go might feel good, it's a lie. And the, the devil is so powerful. You know, he, he, look at our world, the delusion that he's brought upon our world about we would have never thought even six years ago or maybe five years ago, you would have laughed about a, a, a man being able to, to participate in, in women's sports. Did you see the delusion that's on the world today and the confusion? We don't have to live like that. And so all I want to share with you today is for you to recognize that you are a spiritual being.
that God wants to lead you and guide you. Take you. In other words, he's going ahead of you. He's just going to take you by the hand and he's going to guide you down that road. How does he do it then? We're going to close him in. It's, it's so simple that we overlook it, I think, every week. We have the Spirit the day that we accept Christ as our Savior. And he gives us a catalyst. In other words, when you put two ingredients together and how it mixes and it comes together to make one and, and that's what you want, whatever that it happens, that's this. This is a lamp to your feet. As you go down that road, the Holy Spirit is following every step of this. So when you go to read a passage, maybe tonight, it might be one verse in the morning, early in the morning, or as you're driving to work tomorrow, it's exactly what you needed. Because you're a child of God. You're his child. He's going to take you by the hand. And it doesn't get confusing when the spirit ignites with this. It's so basic. It's so basic we overlook it. God wants you to know there's nothing in your life right now, and maybe you're in a holding pattern, there's nothing in your life that he doesn't want to give you joy and victory in, not one thing. But as a believer, sometimes the hardest thing, I get this question more than anything else, is this. How, if that's the case, Dallas, how long do I have to wait? I, that's the main question I get all the time is if, if I'm going to follow the Lord and I know he's taking and I know he's got what's best for me, then how long? And you know what? I'll give you the answer. I don't know. I don't know. But I know this. I know when you are willing to follow him in that truth and not go on your own beliefs and thinking. I know without a doubt. Never leave you. And he will never forsake you. And there's not one place that he's going to take you that you have to fear. Let me say that again. There's not one place that he's going to walk with you that you have to fear. That's who he is in our life. Let's close in just a minute. Look at verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptable with reverence and godly fear. When you are part of his kingdom, do you know there's not one thing the devil can do to you or throw at you or take from you? There's not one that can pull you out of God's kingdom. That as long as we are standing firm and knowing that we are part of God's kingdom, he has the authority. Let me give you an example. You're tempted, and I don't know what it might be. But if you just say, get away from me, devil, do you know that how quickly the devil has to flee? He doesn't have a choice. It is God's authority that rules. He overrules every time. Jesus didn't speak on his own authority. He spoke from heaven, from God. And the same spirit that I just spoke, whether it's Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is in you and the victory that you and I can have that we are guided with that same power that the devil will never, ever, ever be able to defeat or take you from God's kingdom. Think about that. No matter what the devil tries to you to do, all you have to do is resist. The Bible says he will not just walk away, he will flee from you. That's the God that we serve. Let me close with this last verse. Let's go back to that same chapter, John chapter 16 and verse 33. John 16, verse 33. These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I, Jesus is saying today, he, I have overcome the world.
Let me close just by saying, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is right there. And, it, and if you can tonight be quiet enough, or whether it's driving your car or just sitting there with the television off or not on your phone, you say, Lord, you, you know what I'm going through? And, and I'm not sure what to do. Will you, will, you, will you take my hand and will you, will you guide me? Will, will, you, will you just take my hand and guide me this week? Watch the difference that you'll see this week. Because be of good cheer. In other words, God wants you to have joy. Be of good cheer. In the midst of that holding pattern in your life and you're not sure why certain things happen to you and I don't know and I don't have the answers but I know without a doubt as we get closer to the Lord coming back and we see this shaking in the world that you are on a foundation that can never be shaken and to know that Jesus is your heavenly father. He wants to take you by the hand. Don't kick and scream. Walk with him. And as he takes you down that road, as you look back, you will turn to your heavenly father and you will say, Jesus, thank you for letting me not go my own way. Thank you that I've followed you, I'm with you, and I want to keep walking with you. Please, please, as I close today, listen to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that still, small voice that wants to direct you. Let's pray. So our heads are bowed today. It always amazes me how that every week we have different people. We have watch or whether that are here or visitors. And the Lord purposely had you here to hear this message today. To know that the Holy Spirit wants to direct you. And is with you. To encourage you. To guide you whether it's a relationship or a job. Maybe it's insecurity, maybe it's loneliness. I don't know. Jesus is your heavenly Father, and he said, I'm gonna leave you my spirit, and his spirit is right within you today. May you be encouraged. Father, I ask you today, whether it's people, somebody that watch now, whether it's online or whether it's here that Lord, just need to be encouraged through you. May they recognize again the power of you speaking to us in our spirit. And you will guide us in victory. Lord, if there's someone here today that just keeps struggling and is not sure where they're headed or what's going on in their life, Lord, as Ben leads us, we do worship you in spirit and in truth. And you are the way, the truth life. No one comes to the Father except through you. If there's someone here today, may they come forward and I will open up your word and pray with them. And they can accept you as their Savior today and find heaven as their home. And you will guide them the rest of their life through the power of your Spirit. In Jesus' name.